in the previous videos we analyzed the um, link between uh, common performance and competitive advantage. Now in the following uh, slides we will uh, see some of these uh, elements put in the real in the real world and uh, we have uh, um, let's say first case that could be useful to do this kind of, of analysis we have the same set that we have before value creation value capturing and we have a common and if common part so performance common to you and your competitor or the industry common performance if you want to use a more averages approach a la portal and then we have differences value creation and bargaining advantage so take the case of diamonds some years ago around the mid of 19th century the bears start a advertising campaign positioning diamond as an engagement let's say the engagement ring so they start to say basically diamond are strong gems they are very brilliant and they are perfect for engaging your future wife therefore from their own diamonds basically it's a stone a very common stone in the sense that everybody can buy and have this stone and it's not more scarce than other gems become a stone a gem specific for one job to be done for the customer that was the engaging the engagement ring so what the bears did in this case was increasing the common value of the industry an industry that little by little thanks to the bears was the biggest player in the industry therefore the common value in a big part become value for the bears because of his uh, incredibly large uh, capability of mining uh, diamonds but if you look at the industry wise the entire industry was uh, in a very good trend of common performance increase because of the fact that uh, the single diamond became a gem with a very specific and highly important job to be done for men who wants to engage their beloved girlfriend so if you look at the entire value chain from uh, sorry from production of diamonds so mining and produce cutting and polish and then work and manufacture the jewelry this entire value chain had an incredibly increase in common value because of the fact that the, at the end of the chain there was a customer that increased that yes that increased its willingness to pay by many times just because that diamond had a specific job to be done the engagement ring then for sure being one of the biggest explorer and miners of diamond big a big amount of this value finished in the hands of the industry leader the bears who, who started that but if you look on the entire value chain all the other players in the value chain increase a lot the value in terms of common value let's look at a much more tricky case soccer take as an example the Serie A championship here where is the common value and where is the exclusive value creation value if you look at the process there are different things to be considered first one having an interesting competition Serie A can increase the audience so if the competition is uh, not certain this in the beginning if there are good matches if uh, players uh, if uh, soccer teams are let's say similar there will be huge interested huge interesting in seeing who is the winner 
Um, second point, winning a soccer team can get more fun. So if I win more, I will have more fans. Given the fact that fans are customers and customers in soccer loves usually to win, they will tend to follow winning serious uh, teams. So here, there is a first point. As a common value, the group of soccer teams would prefer to have a very uncertainty football matches outcomes for all over the um, championship in order to have interest, people looking at that kind of uh, competition. Second point, specific team would like to have a value creation advantage creating through more winning soccer matches a bigger segment of fans. Third point, winning specific competition, a team can have additional revenue. So again, this is a value creation advantage. If my team is better in playing soccer matches, I win more matches and I get more revenues because I win the competitions, I have the prizes and so on and so forth. Number four, hiring better players, a team can win more. So the more as a single team I have better players, the more I will win. So if you see from number two to number four, we are seeing value creation advantages, having more fun, winning more matches, hiring better players, you will be a better soccer team on top of the common performance, you will have your value creation advantage. Your customers, the fans will be happier, you will win more matches and so on. Point five, being internationally known, a team can attract a bigger, a bigger international audience. So again, if I win more, I will be internationally known, I will win international competitions, I will get international audience. So if you look at this kind of uh, competition, uh, uh, competitive arena points, you should consider that for soccer, the value creation advantage is more important than the common performance. Why? Because if I do from number two to number five, I will be a better team, and I will perform better than the others. I will get more money. I will get more. I will have more prizes through competition. I will win more competition. I will have better players, and I will have this weird, this uh, good cycle. But the true reality is that uh, common performance in uh, soccer is incredibly important. Why? The point number one: having an interesting competition is the key point to acquire new customers. Why? Because if you are in your country, in your country you have fans. Fans become fans of a specific team for, say, specific reason. Uh, that could be family, um, parents who are that uh, of that uh, fans of that team. That can be locally, geographically conditions. That can be uh, specific, let's say, cases. But when you try to sell your product the competition outside your country in that case the common value is much more important you have to serve a product that is not a winning team is an interesting competition therefore if you look at uh, the analysis of this competitive arena in the shoes with the eyes of the Serie A so the league of the teams uh, it's much better to work on the common value than on the specific value of specific teams. And if you want to have a look on that, look at how different uh, leagues worked on this. For example, uh, the, the, the Premiership in UK, they try to work on common performance. They try to have a number of teams, four, five, six teams that were competitive one 
uh, against the other for winning the championship. This because this kind of uh, group of leading teams create interest in competition. For sure, you cannot have 20 soccer teams uh, try to win the same championship. But probably if you have seven, eight, six soccer teams, in that case, you will be able to have an interesting competition. In that case, your product will be a sellable product outside your country where there is no fans, but there are customers, people that want to see all the competition and they are interested in seeing something that is more, let's say, uh, unsure or unscripted uh, for a large part of the period of the championship duration. This is the reason why Serie A had a very bad strategic approach in selling uh, internationally its uh, uh, product and as a consequence the rights the selling of the rights uh, or internationally of these uh, of uh, the Serie A competition has a very low uh, interest and very low revenue so having seen a couple of examples let's try to go back uh, to some key concept uh, that is incredibly useful in the real uh, in the real application of this concept of common value and differentiating value and bargaining value. So we already know from Brandenburger Open One that we have the customer value, price, capture value, and then net suppliers value. But how we apply this in the real world, in the value chain, we see, for example, the diamond value chain, few charts before. So what we have to do is check for profits. So look at profits. And you can see this is the total amount of value generated by, in this case, the oil value chain. So you have oil distributors, oil refiners, and oil drillers. You see the three profits. Here you have the three profits, the net value. And if you are a driller, you will see how much is the supplier value, the the the. Um, the, the drillers that are giving you uh, some value. Here is the value of the refiners, and here is the value for uh, the distributors. So you can see being, let's say, suppose that you are the uh, refiners, you can see where you can uh, try to capture more value, or if altogether you can increase the customer value. So, uh, we should uh, put on the table some examples on uh, this difference between common and exclusive value. Try to elaborate a bit on this because there's an incredibly important uh, concrete consequence of management decisions. And coming back uh, on, the, on the chart, we know that uh, we have, uh, let's say, a part that is common. And here you can see firm one and firm two has a big part of common value here, being part of this value chain, give you at least this amount. And then there is firm number one with uh, exclusive value. So how this kind of exclusive common value behave? Here, the point is that these two concepts are quite dynamic. So what happens that the true competition forces firm two tend to imitate firm one. So little by little, common value, excuse me, exclusive value out of uh, value creation differences or bargaining power tend to become common value. And little by little, when exclusive value become common value, competition start to work. And so usually price and discount tend to uh, be an advantage for customers and not for, for companies. Let's look at an example here. It's how we made coffee since, uh, let's say, the beginning of the 19th century. And the idea was you boiled water, you put some coffee uh, powder, and, and you, through the boiling, get the uh, coffee ready. Then uh, Nespresso, through a specific... Uh, uh, machine, the specific uh, system, and then Lavazza did the same, came up with uh, solutions that were different. And basically gave uh, an exclusive value to customer. 
you can have an espresso, a real espresso in your in your in your home using this new technology of producing the coffee. Then for a, a number of uh, years being uh, protected by uh, a number of uh, um, uh, pro proprietary technologies, uh, uh, Nespresso and Lavazza, for example, as few others like uh, uh, Keurig in, in US, uh, were able to um, protect uh, and, and keep as exclusive this value. Then uh, when uh, uh, the, proper, the, the proprietary technology expired, the value become common. And so you see very quickly, competition forces start to press down prices in order to give more value to the customer transforming exclusive value in common value and lowering the total value for the industry. You can imagine that uh, at the beginning, coffee pots uh, had uh, a price of around $1, one euro. Now you can buy for 10 cents. So you see how much is the effect of, of, of the price competition on this. And probably, and already now we are seeing some of that, uh, companies, probably Lavazza or, or Nestlé or others, will find a way of differentiating themselves and they will find a new way to differentiate the product or the offering to the customer in order to have exclusive value for them. Probably looking at what Nestlé is doing is not going to be another proprietary technology, even if Nestlé launched one, but probably is uh, the broad of the offering for the Nestlé case that could be higher, larger than other competitors giving an exclusive differentiated value to customers. So you can uh, infer uh, from these uh, steps how much these common value, exclusive value are dynamic and the dynamic is the base of competing uh, on the same customer in terms of value creation as Brandenburger told us.